Hello once again everyone, another week, another video. So today I want to talk a little bit about percussive parries, specifically the false edge strikes from below. And the reason I want to talk about that is me and a good buddy of mine were discussing our respective approaches to it. And since now I have a Fiore class, I've seen a lot more people trying to use them. Um, usually this happens, we'll go over the Vexel How, or you know, someone will mention the thing you can do from Fiore, um, and everyone will try it. And I briefly mentioned it uh, last time that Jake was doing a technique video with me, which was on defending against uh, op namens and takeoffs. In which case, you know, we talked about don't try to do that. Well, now we're going to go over how to do it and some different approaches you can do with it because it is a relatively varied technique. So what's basically going to happen here is I want to make sure that I am taking a position um, preferably on my non-dominant side, so that way my arms are uncrossed. It's not that you can't do this with crossed arms, it's that from here, if another right-handed person attacks me, they're coming along this line, meaning that I will catch them um, on the flat, preferably, of their sword. And the reason I want that is because as, as Jake you know, slowly strikes at me here, right, I want to be intercepting it in a plane of, like this, that way all that kind of force goes out that way, versus while I can still achieve it this way, it yields a lot more easily with his wrists and thus is not really going to get me what I want. Now, my target is the flat, preferably. I strike with the edge when I do this, and the reason I do that is because I want my sword not flexing at all, and if I strike onto his flat, his will flex, his will take that energy, and his hands will turn as he comes in with the, uh, with the hits. The question then becomes, how am I moving with it? So when I do my standard vexel how, the changing strike, I prefer to not step with it. Um, and some masters will recommend you don't, some will recommend you do. But generally the way I'm going to set up my vexel how is I'm going to strike in to open. I curl my arms up so I'm ready to strike, and then as he begins to cut, I'm going to come out and strike up at it. Now, you'll notice that I am not striking backward. I'm not completing my motion like this. I want to push forward using my core and my back foot to extend my arms. And just as they're about to hit, I do that little flick, but I don't let myself curl up. If I let myself curl up, all that's going to happen is his sword is going to be carried into my head with mine behind it. Instead, I want that percussion, that sort of outward smack, so that way his sword goes over there and I'm all secure. So we'll show that again. And there it is. Now, I stop my arms here after the flick because I want to make sure that I can strike back as fast as possible. If my arms go up too high, it will take too long for me to come back down. I have had people dodge it before. I have dodged it before. It's not something I want to rely on, but it's something that can happen. I mean, all he really needs to do is back up and he will escape that cut because since I'm staying right foot forward, I can't really follow him. If I do want to follow him, I'll have to step with my left foot, which is not going quite as far as I want to. With a small adjustment, I can turn into a ribbon cut, which is better at chasing, however. So we'll show that real quick. He cuts at me. So I step forward with my foot, and I can get a lot closer. In that case, I would have followed it through with a thrust. But either way, I'm now reaching a little bit further. But the important thing about striking from below here is that I'm getting that up flick. I'm not trying to flick into it. It's striking up strongly, digging into the ground with my leg. And then, just as I make percussion, I open it up. So let's show that on the other side. Perfect. So I'm here, he strikes, right there. Now I can just follow through with a falling blow, or I can turn into something more complex and show it again. And all that great stuff. So, that's when you do it without stepping. And the reason I like to do it without stepping is when I'm focused on the vexel how, I want as big of an opening as I can get. And so, if I don't step, that allows me to dig into the ground a lot more. I will get a lot more percussion um, and all of that grandness. However, the downside of that is if you don't get it correct, you're gonna get hit, right? There's no escape. So, the other way of doing something like this would be to step with it at the same time. This is similar to the plays of Sigmund Ringek from his position of neighborhood, which on this side, he calls that neighborhood versus we're used to this thing. In this case, what it is, is it's less of a smack and more of almost a scoop. So, as he cuts at me slowly here, I'm going to intercept it more on his back edge with my back edge, 
And as I'm stepping out to the side, you see how I've now moved myself out of presence. I can then fall forward with my right step. Now, what about targeting the flat? Why am I going to the back edge? I can still target the flat if I do this, right? It's no problem. I can even make it quite percussive, but since I'm moving forward, I will naturally start to scoop toward the back edge anyway. So that's the reason I call it that, is because it's, it gives me the right visualization. Another thing to consider is that right now we're using one source. With sharps, I'll get a little bit of an actual feeling here, a tiny bit of genuine control. I can do a lot more than you can when you just you know, smack in the flat. If you smack the flat, the sword is going to slide. Right? Edge on flat, it's going to slide. Edge on edge, it's not going to stick together per se, but it will slightly catch. And um, as one of my students recently mentioned, he caught on the sharp edge of one of my swords and said, wow, if I'd had my eyes closed, I would have thought I'd hit the cross guard. Right? So that's the kind of feeling we're talking about here. But either way, with this step, what I want to make sure I'm doing is really, not failing, is really bringing myself out to the side because the wider I step, the safer I am, regardless of how powerful my set aside is. Because if he's genuinely cutting for me, you're not going to get as beautiful of a scoop as I'm getting right now, unless you're really lucky and you're in the exact right time. Usually, go ahead and cut for me. It's going to look something a little bit more like this. Right? You may entirely avoid it, which is great. Um, but if they're extending, go ahead and extend for that head. You're usually going to get something a little bit more akin to this, which not as much of a scoop. I don't really have as much control here, but that's okay because from here I can still execute my normal hits. I can turn over. I can do all that great stuff. But the last thing I want to talk about is the idea of, okay, we struck with it from this side. Can you do it from the other side? Yes, you can. However, um, there's also the idea of what about striking with your flat onto their flat. Now, this is something that appears a lot more in Eastern sources, not that it doesn't appear in Western sources, um, but because a lot of their swords are back swords, they have a spine instead of two edges, using your spine becomes a bit more of a thing. And anyone who's done a messer can tell you, oh, the spine is like its whole other thing, right? So the question then becomes, what about striking with the flat? So, for example, if he comes to strike down at me, I can still almost bring my flat over and achieve the same thing. Personally, I will always step with this if I try this particular move, because if I don't, it's going to slide down into my head more often. I don't have the same percussion that I'm going to get because then I'm flicking the sword sideways. If I do step with it, however, I'm usually in a decent position to follow through. What I prefer to do on this side is actually slightly modified. So if we switch places. If I'm going to strike with the flat, then I need to get a little bit more percussion, which I can get. Um, in which case I prefer to start on my open side. And these are two techniques that I learned from Toyama Ryu, which I've borrowed, basically. So what's going to happen now is I will position myself down here, and as he goes to strike at me, I will now strike over with the flat, which beats his sword out of the way at the same time as me stepping, then I can follow it through with a cut. This is no different mechanically than doing a crumb pow or something along those lines. Same exact thing, it just comes from a very unexpected place. If I step up like this, any German will go, oh, he's going to do the crump. They'll expect that sort of action. Versus if I'm standing here, what most people expect is going to be a strike from below to try and meet. So when he goes off with that strike from my head, and I choose to instead beat his sword to the way, it changes things. But you can make it even trickier than that. If I put myself in a sort of a modified Hanganort, so when I'm doing normal Hanganort, I'll be a bit more extended. This, I'm curling up a lot more, and I'm making sure to give him this opening in my head. What I'm going to do is, as it strikes down at me, is I'm going to push and extend. Now what this does is it pushes his cut off to the side, basically. And this is best used if someone is really going for your head. I'm going to pop it, essentially, right between us, and then just deliver the strike straight down. So I'm here, and straight down. It's really nothing too complicated, and most people are going to look at you a little funky when you first take that position. If you try to take my hands or something along those lines, all I need to do is just pull back and I'm in a great position to thrust. But if he does take the bait and go for my head, just up, straight down. Those are the two situations in which I will use the flat to smack instead of using the edge. And they are borrowed from an entirely different sword system, but they do still work just fine with the long sword. So maybe include it into your style, but either way, those are just some general discussions on 
using the strikes from below to set aside a deflection, if you will. Um, the Vexel Howl plays from Dente de Enchingaro, plays from Nabenhut, and then, of course, our uh, flat strikes. So play with them, see if they work for you, and hopefully these techniques can be an add to your playbook. I certainly like them. Um, I wouldn't define them as great techniques. I'd define them as good techniques. But either way, thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other techniques another time. And thank you, Jake.